This is Andrew Stotts of A. Stotts Investment Research talking about world-class benchmarking. Today I'm looking at the company SP Satya in Malaysia. First, let's get a little background on the company. SP Satya Berhard engages in property development, infrastructure, and wood-based manufacturing and trading. It provides services mainly in Malaysia and has extended its reach to Vietnam, Singapore, Australia, and England. The company has about 2,000 employees and more than 30 successful property development projects. We can see the company's overall trading data here, and we can see the yellow line is the company's stock, which is on the left-hand scale. We see a lot of volatility in that stock, but if we look at the size of the company, it's about a $2.6 billion company with a beta of about 0.8 meaning a low relationship to the market. It's in the real estate sector. It's got about 64% free float. Now let's take a look at what's going on at the company. First of all, SPSB, as it's called, the ticker, core business, property development, carries out residential projects such as Satya Sky Residences and commercial projects such as Satya Walk. The company's portfolio includes a total of 26 projects in all regions of Malaysia. In addition, SPSB develops projects in England, Australia, Vietnam, and Singapore. The company is working on the purchase of INP Group, which would bring SPSB's total land bank to more than 10,000 acres. The purchase price is expected to be around about 800 million US dollars. SPSB intends to use a mix of equity, internally generated funds, and debt for the acquisition. Besides its property development business, SPSB has a fully owned subsidiary, Satya Precast, engaging in infrastructure projects. It has built more than 35,000 units of prefab residential units. SPSB also engages in wood-based manufacturing, trading, catering to the construction industry. Under the Satya Wood brand, their manufacture and distri distribute roofs, doors, windows, moldings, and other carpentry work. Let's take a look at the revenue breakdown. What we can see is revenue for 2016 is 90% property development, a very focused company. Infrastructure 6%, and then most of the remaining is coming from wood-based manufacturing and trading. 83% of the revenue is coming from within Malaysia, though they plan on expanding the international component over time. Now that we have a good understanding of the company, let's look at the world-class benchmarking score of the company. First of all, we want to identify who is the person in charge as far as chairman is concerned, and we can see from 2009 to the present, Mr. Wan Mohammed Zahid has been the chairman. And we can see that the CEO has been CEO from 1996 to 2015 and that was C. Leo and what we can see is that there is a new CEO as of 2015 Mr. Kor Chap Jen to the present so most of the performance of the company can be attributed to the new CEO and let's take a look at that right now we can see that starting in about 2015-2016 the performance we can attribute to the new CEO. Profitable growth saw a great improvement in 2015, but it's fallen back to number four. Profitability has fallen to number four, as well as from number two in 2015. So 2015 was a very good year for profitability and growth. Gro growth has dropped from being world-class to just average at number five. Now, if we look deeper, we can see that asset utilization improved one step to number four in the prior 12 months. And we can also see that profit margin fell one step to number four in the prior 12 months. Sales growth has been in the red seriously bad over the last couple of uh, periods. And margin change has improved a bit at three. It's ranked at three, which is slightly lower than it's two, but still a good performance on improvement in margin. Want to see more? Well, just sign up for our free newsletter and get access to more investment knowledge at becomeabetterinvestor.net slash join, and I'll see you there.